The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priest. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed. Were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. So, Heavenly Father, we like to thank you and we like to praise you. We thank you for the gift of our lives and every gift you have given us. We thank you for one another. And we thank you, especially for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. 
Help us to understand you. Help us to appreciate every good gift you have given us. That we may say thank you at all times in praise of your name. My dear brothers and sisters, thank God and give him praise. Thank God and give him praise in all situations in your life, in my life. We are asked today to say thank you. Without faith, you can say thank you. It is with faith and by faith and through faith that one can say thank you. We all might have experienced an occasion where somebody we did something good for took for granted and then just went away. How did you feel? How did I feel? And how would you feel? Today we are reflecting of thanking God and saying praise be to your name. In all whether we are rich or poor, in all situations, so my brothers and sisters in Christ, today as we reflect on this theme, we are also called and invited to acknowledge the gifts that God has given us with his wonder we say thank you and as we reflect on saying thank you, we can also ask ourselves, are we capable of saying thank you to God at all times? How many times do we say thank you? In our family, in our community, here in the seminary, for our staff members, Seminarians, thank you. Even when a seminarian has cleaned your room, how do we say thank you? When my brother, as a seminarian, has done something good for me, explaining to me something which I did not understand during lectures, do I say thank you? I take for granted. True or false? Hmm? Because there's no need. But today, we are learning from the word of God. In the first reading, a Syrian commander, a soldier, an officer who had power had been crippled, as it were, by leprosy. In the time leprosy was considered a deadly disease. And so anybody who had been infected with this disease would be kept 
outskirts of the town or village. You are marginalized. But it took a little girl who was from Israel that had been captured, who was seven, to ask Naaman, the Syrian commander, go. And when Syrian commander Naaman went and he was told, go and wash yourself in the river Jordan. Why should I go? Why should I wash? There are so many rivers in wherever I had come from. Should I not have gone there to wash? But once again, the insistence came, if you had been told by the prophet to do something extraordinary, wouldn't you have done it? And then he obeyed and washed and he was clean. He was cleansed, reminding us once again of baptism. We were once also covered with leprosy of sin. But thank God we are washed once by our baptism to receive the cleansing of the Holy Spirit. And as we have received that, we are learning from the Syrian soldier, the commander, Naaman. Naaman went back with his retinue, with all the gifts. He went to the prophet to say thank you. He ascribed his healing to that prophet, Elisha. But when he saw the prophet, the prophet told him, no, I'm not receiving any gift you have brought. Drawing the attention of this man, Naaman, that look, this has not been done by me. It has been done by God, the God of Israel. Not to us, O oh Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory. Today, as we reflect on how to say thank you, we are also being converted. As Naaman was converted from his old way of worshipping other gods, Naaman thought to himself, if I could give the prophet all these gifts, perhaps he will appreciate whatever I have given. But the prophet had to insist. The thank you, yes, but not to me, but to God. So now, the prophet allows him to see that the power of healing is not coming from him, but from God. My brothers and sisters, no man got converted. What did he do? He said, I have not seen a God anywhere. I profess that there is no God but the God of Israel. My brothers and sisters, again, Naaman also collected the soil from the land of Israel. That from now on, as I go back, I'm no longer going to worship the other gods because I have come. 
I have seen, I have come to believe. As we reflect on this, God is faithful. Our God we worship is faithful to us in every way, at all times. God is faithful. And therefore, at the end of the second reading today, St. Paul in his letter to Timothy said, If we are unfaithful to God, God remains ever faithful to his covenant. He cannot deny himself because he's God. Because he is the author of life. As we continue our journey, what happened in the first reading is also reminding us of what in the New Testament, as we read today in the Gospel according to Luke chapter 17, 10 lepers. The context is this, that Jesus has set his face traveling to Jerusalem. What was he going to do there? But to die on the journey he came around Samaria and Galilee. And where he was continuing the ten lepers who had been asked to stay away from the people from the village, from the town saw him passing. My dear brothers and sisters, we see Jesus passing. This person who is passing is not an ordinary person. It is Jesus. Jesus passing is God passing. And therefore, when people have asked the ten lepers to stay away from the village when they saw Jesus they started shouting Master Master take pity on us and indeed they defied all odds they did not allow what people were going to say to them Jesus had to stop for them. And Jesus will stop for you who are weak. You and I who are weak, who are filled with leprosy. It is only Jesus who will stop. Jesus took interest in the ten lepers. They were together Again, as we reflect, I want us to look at how the ten lepers were, as it were, crying out. In our journey of life, my brothers and sisters, we need from time to time to cry out for help from Jesus. Because it is only Jesus who can help you. Who can help me? So they cried out. And Jesus said, Go and show yourself to the priests. We follow the instruction of Jesus. As the ten lepers followed the instruction of Jesus, they listened. They took what Jesus said to them seriously. As we are here, we are being instructed by Jesus himself. Go and wash. Go and show yourself to the priest. Leviticus, when we read chapter 14, verse 2 following, we'll see how one who had been filled or had been infected with leprosy had to go by way of identifying yourself, showing yourself that you are now clean, 
show yourself to the priest. It is the priest who will come out to declare that you are now cleansed. On the way, when they have not read the priest, they got healed because the author of priesthood had asked them, go and show yourself to the priest. They obeyed and they were cleansed on the way. May the Lord also show us the way so that as we continue our journey of formation of life, we will also be healed on our way. When they had been healed, now, one realizing that he had been healed returned to Jesus. He was praising and thanking God. Eh? He was praising and thanking God for what had happened to him. Why? One, because he was cast out from the people. His own family had deserted him. He had been, as it were, asked to be alone. Not to come closer. Those days you have to shout, I'm unclean, unclean. You know, nobody will come nearer. So now if somebody has been so gracious to me, to heal me, what do I do? I go back and I say, thank you. I go back saying, you have made me well. You have restored my image as a child of God. I have become once again truly a human being. That was what the one who was a Samaritan had to do. Normally, when somebody has graciously, you know, done you something good, in return you say thank you. Sometimes people forget. And then they will not say thank you. Why? Because, oh, it's my brother. It's my father. It's my mother. Oh, this is, you know, as for priests, if they do something, if they come and bless my, my house for me or my car for me, what is it? This is his job to do it. Hmm? These days when people call priests to go to bless, oh, <laughs> Father, Yebeshia will have saw them. They have taken for granted. Hmm? Even living from living here from the seminary, do we say thank you to our formators? Hmm? Do we say thank you to our formators? Yes. That is good. Continue to do that. The Samaritan returned to Jesus. He did not see only Jesus healing him. Because of his faith, he saw that God in Jesus had healed him. Power belongs to God in Jesus. So as we reflect on this, the movement, the people, the ten lepers had to move. The nine who did not return to say thank you took certain things for granted. They did not see beyond their condition. They were short-sighted. They did not realize that they had been given something so precious as healing. Behind the physical healing was also the spiritual healing of conversion. The nine did not convert. 
can be among the nine. You can be among the nine. Because we take for granted. I did not have children. As a parent. And now you have a child. You are taken for granted. You did not have what it takes to be in a seminary. Thank God you are now here by God's grace because he has been faithful to you. What do you then say? What do you then do? But to offer yourself, your mind, your heart, your soul, your being entirely, totally, completely to God in thanksgiving. You are an element of thanksgiving. Every seminarian here must see himself as a thanksgiving offering to God. That Lord, I am offering myself to you. And this offering will never go wasted. As the night went away, they forgot. They followed the conventions. I'm asked to go and see the priest. So on my way, when I'm even cleansed, I don't even see the reason why I have to go back. Did they actually go to see the, the priest? Did they read the priest? We are not told. We are not told in the gospel. But the point is, the Lord is teaching us how to be grateful to the many gifts and talents, even our vocation that he has given us. We have to be thankful. The only thing you need to do is to say thank you. But without faith, you will never be able to say thank you. But Francis keeps saying, you need to go out of yourself to realize what God has done for you. You and I, we need to go out of ourselves, our comfort zones, to realize the power of God in us and to say thank you. He has been faithful and he continues to be faithful. Do not take him for granted. Another element that comes out of the gospel. When the Samaritan came to Jesus, Jesus saw him kneeling at his feet. He said, get up. Go. Your faith has saved you. Your faith has made you well. It was only to the one who returned that this statement from Jesus was said. And indeed, this must also help us to reflect on how when we have said thank you for what the Lord has done for us, we continue to receive our salvation. We continue to experience the love of God for us. We need always to remember, Lord, you are so good to me. You have been so good to me and you continue to be so good to me. How can I thank you? How can I praise you? You know, it is something we can't get over. We cannot understand. Say thank you to God who has created you in his image and likeness. When we were baptized, we were cleansed. When we go to confession and we are cleansed, we say thank you. Why? Because he has made us whole. He has restored us again. This is what 
it means to be a disciple, a missionary disciple of Jesus. Never forget to say thank you to God. In your formation, every moment is a gift to you. As a parent, every moment is a gift to you, whether good or bad. Let us remember that in every situation, God is always faithful. And because of his faithfulness, we will return to his feet and say thank you. So that he will also ask us to go and offer to others the cleansing, the healing we have experienced. We are gathered to celebrate the biggest thanksgiving at the altar. The Eucharist is a thanksgiving sacrifice, a thanksgiving offering, a thanksgiving worship. We are going to offer this thanksgiving, offer yourself in addition to whatever we bring to the altar and say thank you. Thank you to the Lord.